tonight we're uh, investigating uh, a certain illustrious friend, the Iranian filmmaker Maziar Bahari, and his uh, reasons for choosing the top ten. Well, it was very difficult, actually, decision to make a top ten. So, in compiling the list, I thought I should maybe have uh, three criteria. One uh, was making a point, uh, basically films that are relevant to our time and films that I think people have to watch. The other ones uh, was the films that I thought were really well accomplished films that people do not have not seen. And in terms of one film, it was just, I like to see it on big screen, so I chose it. It's, beco it's becoming my mission now that what I want to do these days is also saying that Ahmadinejad is not the only Iranian, you know, that you know, there are other Iranians besides Ahmadinejad. I mean, it sounds funny, but I think I'm, I'm a bit repulsed by the media obsession with Ahmadinejad and the fact that he's become such a big image of Iran. So whatever I can, not to have him as the image of Iran and have any other voice out of Iran, I do that. Okay. In your top ten, you have two fiction films. Two fiction Which is really... Uh, okay. Well, there are very, I mean, very simple reasons for that. When uh, I was asked to compile the ten, top ten films, I thought that two of the films have to be films about war. One against the war, one for the war. And I went through the list of all the documentaries that I've seen. I haven't seen any documentaries, good documentaries, that are pro-war. And I thought that, well, what the hell, I mean, there are no good documentaries with my, uh, within my criteria, so I should choose to fiction films that any documentary filmmaker would dream about making and Green Beret is one of very few pro-war films. I saw Green Beret two days ago because it's here at ITVA and I was just laughing. I mean, when it came out it was 68, so it's probably not a funny movie, but here you're watching it. It's ridiculous. Okay, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I get the message. We should go to war. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So well, that what, is. what do you think if they make a movie like this right now? It's going to be hysterical as well. It will be hysterical, but it won't be more hysterical and ridiculous than what the Bush administration did in Iraq and they're planning apparently to do in Iran. The film that I think crystallizes and shows the best that crazy attitude of warmongers is Dr. Strangelove. It's as if that Kubrick was a brilliant documentary filmmaker and had access to the administration. The characters that you see in Dr. Strangelove can easily be replaced by you know, the characters that we see around us. Like George C. Scott's character can put easily Donald Rumsfeld or uh, Dick Cheney. Uh, that crazy Russian could easily be one of the ambassadors from the uh, Arab countries, one of these authoritarian Arab countries, or other authoritarian countries who are equally mad as the American administration. And it's just a brilliant film, and at the same time it's prophetic because it tells us something in 1966. 63. 63 even. And that's, you know, that's the people in Washington right now, they haven't grasped yet.